Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about statically indeterminate beams. So here I have a console beam, which is also having a um, basically roller support at the end. And you know that a beam in a plane has three degrees of freedom and this uh, cantilever support will take all three away. So this extra constraint we have makes the beam indeterminate. So if the reaction by the roller is called RB and the reactions by the cantilever is RA and MA and you know there is also a horizontal reaction coming from this fixed support but since here there is no other horizontal uh, force on this beam then this horizontal reaction here is zero. Okay so right now I have three unknowns the uh, unknown moment and these two unknown vertical reactions RA and RB and uh, since the X equation is already taken because we determined that this X force is equal to zero so the only two equations we have here is sum of the forces in the Y direction and assuming that we go with the regular X and Y the sum of the forces in the Y direction which is equal to RA plus RB minus the equivalent force of this distributed load since the load density is Q the length is L the equivalent load is going to be Q times L here right at the center because the load is uniform so minus Q times L this is equal to zero and then if you take some of the moment about any point let's say point A okay and go with a counterclockwise positive direction then you have plus ma ra has no moment ql has a negative moment and this distance you know is l over 2 so it is going to be minus ql times l over 2 and finally plus rb times l this is equal to 0 so if you call them equations one and two, you have two equations and three unknowns. So definitely your beam is what? Statically indeterminate. You cannot solve for all unknowns. So from a static aspect, you cannot solve this problem. But you also have knowledge from solid mechanics. That is the deflections. So we have some constraints. What are the constraints? Well, the Y deflection at this point has to be zero as well as at this point y is zero and here also the slope is zero right so here this y at x equal l is zero and of course here this y at x equal zero is zero and y prime the slope at x of zero is also zero now we do not want to find the deflection all y as a function of x here because that also brings with it two constants at least and uh, then we have to solve for more equations and more unknowns because that brings two unknowns that makes five unknowns and then we have uh, uh, three um, motion constraints and two force constraints so we have five and five so our goal is to find these three and so here is where we use the superposition, okay? So we assume that the um, displacements and the deflections are all small. So we use superposition. And what does superposition mean here? Means that we try to apply this constraint that we learned, just one of them, because we only need one extra equation. And let's say here, we use this guy here at the end. We use the fact that the deflection at the end is zero. So what do we do? We say this beam is equivalent to what? Equivalent to. Uh, whatever it is with the distributed load. Plus whatever it is with that load at the end yes 
the goal of this load at the end is to ensure that this uh, displacement at the end is equal to zero. So what do I do? I find the deflection of the end point here. I find the deflection of this point. Right here, actually, it's the opposite direction. Under this condition, this uh, point goes down. Under this load, this point goes up. So if I call this y of l number 1, and if I call this y of l number 2, then some of these two y's or delta y's should be equal to 0, right? Because that's our constraint. So the question is, how much is it? And uh, you might say now I have to solve for two y of x functions, one for this load, one for that load. But the thing is, for most of these uh, types of loadings, the y at the specific points, which in this case the maximum y, is available in diagrams at the end of your solid mechanics book. So if you look at your solid mechanics book, it says that if you have a cantilevered beam with a uniform loading like that, the y at the end, y l number 1, if you look, these are already calculated for you. You don't need to calculate it. That is equal to q times l to the 4 over 8 times e times i, where e is the Young modulus and i is the cross-section of the beam about the neutral axis. So in this case, if this is the cross-section of the beam, it's about this axis, this neutral axis. I about that is the I that you use here. You might call it, for instance, in this case, um, with this definition we have, it's IZZ. Right? And then for this uh, load, the load at the end, YL number 2 is, of course, equal to what? equal to r of b l cubed over 3 times e times i z z. Now, as I said, some of these two should be equal to what? To 0. And guess what? This gives you another equation for which the only unknown is r b. So from here, if you call this equation number 3, you can directly solve for r b. And if you solve for RB, the solution is going to be 3QL over 8. There we go. This is one of your unknowns. Let's call it 4. Now I'm going to plug this 4 back into what? Into 1 and 2, right? Because now R of B is taken care of. Now R of B is known. So this one is known. This one is known. So if I plug 4 in 1 and 2, then 1 and 2 only have two unknowns. The first one only has RA, which is good. You directly solve for it. And once you have that uh, RB in the second one, the only unknown in that is MA. And then you solve for what? For MA. So let's go ahead and do that. So we plug in 4 in 1. That will give us R of A. And then we plug in, plug in 4 in 2 and that should give us m a and the solutions are 5 q over l times 8 and this one is going to be what q l square over 8 done you see here so i used the superposition of the deflections at the end in this case or any point could be but typically for this kind of loading we have the maximum loading which is at the end for this condition and that is going to give us an extra equation and now with three equations three unknowns i can solve for everything so i use the equilibrium plus the motion constraint hopefully this video was useful to you i'll see you in the next lecture thank you